Okay, my friends, you know the deal when it comes to Raw Rumble ups and downs. There's so much to talk about, we've just got to get into it. And will I, the bald idiot, Simon Miller, make some mistakes? Yes. Will you get mad at me in the comments? Yes. So we've just fast forwarded through this intro. Now take care, put your twist in the chair. Let's get ready to up those downs for the 2024. Royal Rumble. So there was a fun start to the damn thing because Pat McAfee came out to join commentary, which is basically what he does nowadays. <laughs> Just wakes up on a big event with WWE and goes, ha ha, I better go do some talking. WWE also wasn't playing around because our first match was the Women's Raw Rumble. And entrant number one was Natalia. And entrant number two was flipping Naomi, the former Trinity in TNA, and before that, Naomi in WWE. So we just got right into this with a huge surprise even though it wasn't a big surprise. Most people knew, but this was still lovely. And that's because she got the best welcome from this crowd and go check out her social media. She is over the moon, so let's just get on with it. That's getting it up. Bailey was number three, and keep that one in your head, and Candice Ray was number four. When, let's just get into some spoiler territory here. The women's rumble kind of played its trump card to go, ha ha, we're gonna be better than the men's. Cause do you know who came in at flubbing number five? It was the TNA knockout champion, Jordan Grace. And even commentary went, oh, it's Jordan Grace. She just recently beat Trinity slash Naomi for that championship. I was like, well, hot damn, man. We are not in Kansas anymore, Toto. It also meant that in the world of kayfabe, a TNA wrestler could have main evented WrestleMania. And I was like, man, do it. And once again, we had this lovely jubbly moment where Naomi and Jordan hugged. <laughs> they started to punch each other in the face. Indy Hartwell was number six and Oscar was number seven. And that too was important because Bailey looked at her like, oh, hi, my friend. It's really great to see you. But why did you not tell me you were entering the Royal Rumble? And this all worked together because they got rid of Hartwell when Ivy Nile walked to the ring. This is when Bailey was shouting at Michael Cole. Why don't you get in the ring, pal, and we'll have a fight. They should have done it. Katana Charles was here at number nine when Jordan Grace looked at Ivy Nile, and Ivy Nile looked at Jordan Grace when we got into some pumped women slamming women beef. A word to that effect, but give me more of this. Bianca Belair was number 10, which also felt like a huge deal, and she went right after damage control, which very handedly worked with number 11, because it was Kyrie Sane of damage control. It's almost like somebody writes this. Tegan Knox was number 12, and she hit Molly go round onto Bailey when she threw out Natalia. Now, look, no one's gonna be talking about this, but everybody should. This is the most important thing somebody has done in years. Cause I was like, that is a great move, Teagues. Cause let's face it, what do you get <laughs> with teaming from Natalia? Nothing. Certainly it didn't work cause Knox forgot she was in the match and Bailey threw her out, but still. Kayla Carr was number 13, which is when a bunch of people got together to eliminate Kyrie Sane. And you need to go and watch this right now. I can't even describe it. But she kind of grabbed hold of the ring apron and all her limbs were just being torn from the inside. Now she was selling this going, bah, bah, bah. let's face it, this must have hurt. And then sadly somebody whomped her on the head and she fell to the floor. I was actually relieved. This has to have been the most uncomfortable position anyone has ever been in. Now, of course, this was courtesy of Carter and Chance, who then went and did the same thing to Oscar. So they hit the floor. And why did they do this? Because, of course, they lost their championships on SmackDown. That's called booking. Josie Green was at number 14. I want to give her a shout out, too, because her character is so good. She was making me laugh throughout all of this. When Bianca Belair eliminated Jordine Grace by giving her a KOD onto the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. Now, once again, kudos to Grace, because she must have gone, how can I maximize my minutes? Well, you did a flubbing fantastic job. Piper Niven was number 15, and she was kind of helping out Chelsea Green, but she also kept crushing her. And this joke has gone full circle now. For a while, I was like, well, this is really dumb. Now nah, it's making me laugh. Finally, was back at 16 after drinking some ceremonial tea or something. Selena Vega was number 17, whereas Maxine Dupree was 18. That's when Piper grabbed Chance and threw her over the top rope. Nia Jax then came in at 19, and my word, we sold this like, oh, she's such a monster, which is definitely true, because almost instantly she threw out Zia Lee and Ivy Nile. Dotsy then arrived at 20. I was like, well, it's been a while. Where has she been? All the other women then went, oh, we've seen Raw Rumbles before, and we're all gonna have to team up to try and get rid of Nia Jax. But this didn't work at all. Cousin said Jax was like, you shouldn't have done that to me, Piper Niven. And she threw her to the floor too. Chance also got this treatment, and I was like, oh, Nia is going to win the Raw Rumble. And once again, all the seeds are in place here, because who came out at 21 to a mega pop? Becky Lynch. Green was eliminated through all of that as Alba Fire came in at 22, and Shayna Baszler was coming in at 23. 
I just want to say this about Shayna. Like, I'm a big fan of her. But WWE has not capitalised on the fact that she did defeat Ronda Rousey. And here, she kind of made up the numbers. So I'm going to be a nerd, damn it. That gets it down. It then got really damn good, though, because Valhalla was 24. Or at least she was meant to be. Although, what was the deal with Michael Cole? I must have missed something here. When she came out, he was all, oh my gosh, be wearing the antlers. Be wearing the antlers. And when she did come out in the antlers, nobody has ever been happier. Apart from me, four seconds later, because listen what happened. From nowhere, our truth appeared. He ran past this voodoo queen. And when he got in the ring, he was looking around going, wait a minute. <laughs> Where are all the guys? Because, <laughs> of course, he'd made a mistake. Do you know there's some people out there that don't enjoy our truth Look, you think whatever you want to think, but I actually think you're crazy. Of course, Nia Jax just grabbed him and threw him over the top rope as Adam Pearce was like, what are you doing? And actually, that's a nice callback because when Nia Jax entered the men's rumble a few years ago, she beat up our truth and Valhalla was also good because she then got in the ring. She too was eliminated when they were walking back. She was like, thanks a lot, our truth You screwed me over. So that honestly gave me so much joy. I am going to give it an up. And then Meat Chin was here at number 25. I mean, it's not her fault. This wasn't the best spot to be in. Naomi then got rid of Alba Fire as Zoe Stark came in at 26. And Shayna got rid of Selena. One of the most terrifying eliminations I've ever seen. There's also build out to number 27 though that was NXT's Roxanne Perez. As they keep saying on NXT ups and downs, and as she proved here, she is good to go on the main roster right now. We then went mega with Nia Jax as she threw out Mitchin, Shotzi, and Shayna. That's because there was some rumbling goings on. Because somebody huge and somebody big was about to arrive at 28. And I thought this was so damn good. To the point, people always go, oh man, she can't wrestle, she can't wrestle. I mean, she can. But even if she can't, I don't care. Because her presentation is so good. It's what sports entertainment is all about. Because that's right. Who made their WWE debut? Jade Cargill. She instantly faced off with Nia Jax. And the fans loved this. And I was sat there going, do it a mania. Do it a mania because I have problems. Honestly, Cargill is so strong. She was picking up Jax and throwing her around like she was nine. Eventually, too, Jade just sent her sailing over the top rope to the floor. And then the camera cut back. And even Becky Lynch was standing there going, ha, 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 ha. So once again, this was a great couple of minutes up. Tiffany Stratton then got her moment at 29. And she took about five people all at once. So that was cool. When we had kind of a cool surprise for number 30, or at least I liked it. Because once again, who has come back to WWE? Liv Morgan. She threw out Stark, because take that, damn it. Stratton also got a little something-something when she eliminated Roxanne Perez. And that too was clever, because maybe they can do something on NXT. Then got the big stare-off between Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Once again, I was going, do it, do it at WrestleMania. As I realised I was overbooking the card. When we got a really smart elimination. Because Jade eventually turned her attentions to Becky Lynch and kind of got her over the top rope. When Naomi ran at Cargill... So she grabbed her midair and kind of pendulum swung her right into Becky that eliminated her and knocked her to the floor. I was like, man, that looks so good. And also, this Jade Cargill's eliminating everyone. She then also did the same thing to Naomi, and that's like, well, she's not going to win, but she's already made. When, if you can believe it, Stratton was able to hold on to Bianca's hair so she didn't hit the floor. Now, look, obviously, I can't empathize with this, but it looked like it really hurt. Maybe then all of a sudden remembered that she's been in this for ages and she saw an opportunity because she stuck up to both of them and she booted one, which created a domino effect. So she just got rid of both. Men of the final three were Bailey, Liv Morgan and Jade Cargill. And eventually all three of these guys were on the ring apron. And this too ruled because Liv and Bailey had essentially gone, man, she really big. We're going to have to work together. And they were. They were kind of ping-ponging her. The final blow that Morgan gave her two to get out of there was really good, but it left her on uncertain footing, which is when Bailey ran at Liv, knocked her to the floor to win the Women's Raw Rumble. And man, I tell you, talk about warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum. Think about how much giving Bailey has done for the last, what, 10 years or whatever. Now she got her moment, and I bet she goes on to WrestleMania, and she beats EO Sky after being kicked out of damage control. This is good stuff, my friends. And I enjoyed all of this Raw Rumble. It's like a topsy-turvy roller coaster. Let's gang it up. Talk about a crazy match card too, because our next match was the Super Duper Wooper Crazy Universal Title Contest. Ah. Norse men there was Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles versus Randy Orton versus LA Knight. Well, you probably could have got a pad and written down what was going to happen here because it was obvious these four are great. Pretty good. Knight and Styles are still mad at each other, so they were using Ali the announce table almost instantly. Well, I think Randy Orton took offense to this because he uses Ali the announce table, so he was hurling everyone into that thing. 
That's why I came up with another WrestleMania match. It should be Randy versus Alan. As ever, Roman then used his tribal chief powers to take over, and he just stomped around for a while, going, acknowledge me. When LA Knight must have taken a Phoenix down, because he gave this amazing suplex to AJ Styles, I think we should do them mania. They have good chemistry. LA was cooking to such a degree, too, he turned his attentions back to the head of the table, and he hit him with the BFT, and I kid you not, the ref went one, the ref went two, and just as the ref was about to go three, the crowd went ooh, because AJ Styles broke it up. Available now on Pro Wrestling Tees. He then kind of knew that Reigns was winning because he also got smashed with the Styles Clash that resulted in another one 2 ooh. But this was quite a good story because now we know. Can Roman Reigns take on one guy? Sure. But can he take on three? Absolutely not. He was being mugged off. That's when it was Styles' turn to get rocking and rolling. <laughs> Although this went terribly bad because he just sailed right into an RKO. That looked great. LA got one too, although the best one, and maybe one of the best ever, is when Roman went to hit him with a spear, and of course he got RKO'd, but I kid you not, Reigns was taken off like an aeroplane. It was like this damn high. It also meant that Randy pinned Roman Reigns, and he got the one, two, three, which would have been the case if it wasn't for those meddling kids or flipping Solo Sokoa, who pulled the ref out at two. So it was like, man, that's three times Roman should have lost and he didn't. Sokoa had maxed out his meters too, so he ate everybody alive. As brand new fans started to go, well, wait a minute, why isn't that a DQ? And poor hardcore fans had to be like, well, you know, because it's four way. That's not how it works. When the other person would be like, well, why don't they just use a gun? Quite. It really did suck for Solo eventually though, because he got obsessed with doing hip attacks when he went to do one final one into AJ Styles. Of course, Ash got out the way. Sokoa went crashing through Barry Barricade. But then got this wonderful bit too, because Styles used that to get his own momentum, where he hit Roman Reigns with a phenomenal forearm. And essentially, like Roman Reigns had done at WrestleMania, he stacked up everybody. I was like, man, just for the chaos, let him win. Instead, everybody kicked out. Finally, AJ went to get a chair, and I was like, well, thank goodness for that, because somebody should be using a weapon. But it didn't really work at all, and he never even got to Roman Reigns. When poor Randy Orton just got speared out of the ring, that fall looked like it sucked. This is when LA Knight once again was going to go for the BFT, but instead Roman grabbed him. And at the exact same time, AJ was going to go for the phenomenal forearm. So they all went crashing into the ropes. And look, I don't know whether Styles meant to do this or not, but he took this gnarly fall. It actually looked like he'd been shot. It also meant that Roman was able to get rid of LA where he hit the spear onto AJ Styles and he got the one, two, three. So again, you could see this coming a mile away, but in terms of that finish, that's pretty damn good. And I do totally admit that we do have to fix this idea of watching every single Roman Reigns match and knowing he is going to win. Hopefully we will do that at WrestleMania 40, though it's getting enough. However, when you look back through this, we didn't need to do the same Solo Sokoa interference because we had all the other guys breaking up all the other pins. So at one point, Roman could have speared everybody, and as long as an LA Knight was there to break it up, it would have been fine. That just felt like, well, jumping the shark a little bit, we're gonna down. When WWE didn't know what to do. Yep. Now, because I am an idiot, all week I've been shouting, let Jake Paul interfere, because I just thought that would be a wonderful ending to Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship, because it was obvious that Logues wasn't gonna lose it this soon, so why not involve Jake? Everybody would be talking. And the answer is probably he didn't want to do it. I don't have to worry about that. I'm fantasy booking. Instead, though, when the bell ring, Kevin Owens just ran at this man and started to beat the crap out of him. As you would do, he's been a massive goober. The problem, though, as we have been told, is that Kev does have a bad hand. So Paul was grabbing that. He was stomping on it. And at one point, he took it. And he just slammed it into Rita the ring post over again. It's like, why won't you leave Rita alone? What has she done to you? It did work because Paul was unable to hit a crossbody and this shooting star press. I just watched it. I'm like, man, you're so... Damn good at this wrestling. How's that so smooth? He even went for a 619, but Owen stopped that by smashing his head off when he went all Mortal Kombat combo. He hit a neck breaker. He did chops with his good hands because Kevin Owens is the best. Cannibals, bashed the flogs. One, two, ooh. Eventually, Logan got his knees up on the senton too when he hit a buckshot lariat for his own one, two, ooh. When Kevin even hit him with an avalanche fisherman's buster. So I was like, once again, fair play, Logan, you're doing it right. The usual shenanigans then started because this one guy that only turns up to pay-per-view, premium live events, and apparently is a buddy of Logan Paul's, jumped to ringside going, oh, I just want to help. But thankfully this time, the referee and the security guard's like, we're not idiots, you know. You're not allowed to get anywhere near the ring. Sadly, though, two people that were allowed to get close to the squared circle, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, so they started talking to this guy, and within the fracas, they got the brass knucks to Logan Paul, 
And that dastardly villain was going to hit Kevin Owens right in the face. No! KO decided that he didn't want another black eye, so he reversed this. He took the brass knucks, he slammed Logan Paul right in the skull, and he pinned him once again for the one, two, three. This is when it did go crazy, because just as the referee's hand was like here, going for the trez, he saw the fact, wait a minute, you were wearing paraphernalia on your hand, I ain't no dummy, and he called for the DQ. What? Now, on the one hand, I absolutely love this, because this is how referees should be treated in professional wrestling, because look at the good you can take out of it. Also, the camera angle here, mwah, lovely. I shouldn't have done that. The other problem, though, is kind of summed up there. WWE especially <laughs> makes their referees look so damn dumb, this is a bit like, how have you noticed it this time, but you've never noticed it before? Owens was also so damn pissed at this that he powerbombed Logan Paul through Allen the announce table. So once again, I was like, man, he really is taking it. And look, if WWE keeps building on this and keeps doing this stuff with the officials, oh my gosh, I'll look back on this with even more joy and love, but I'm going to give it up. The match itself was awesome. And I love it when any company comes up with out-of-the-box ideas, excuse me, box-like structure, and that's what this was. And again coming close. Kevin Owens is one of the best of all time. Up. When we got to the men's Raw Rumble, what a ridiculous evening this was. Do not forget as well, the winner does go to the main event of WrestleMania and all the wrestlers want to be the main event of WrestleMania. So who came at number one? It was main event Jey Uso who wants to go to WrestleMania. We kept the obvious obvious too because number two was Jimmy Uso and even just seeing these two face off, I was just like, man, all the stuff with the bloodline has worked. The problem though, the Grace and Waller came in at number three, and from that point on, Jimmy and Jay never even looked at each other again. I mean, it was so much in the opposite direction, I'm now a bit like, are we actually doing this match at WrestleMania? Because we should do, but it just felt like a missed opportunity to me. So while originally it was the greatest thing ever, yeah, it did fall off. That's a down. Number four is when we got our first surprise, and actually maybe our only surprise in the whole damn thing, because who proved that the internet was right? It was Andrade. He's back in WWE. Now, WWE did do that thing where they were just focused on a random member of the crowd. So at first, I was like, who is this guy? Which actually ties into another issue I had with not only this Royal Rumble, but a lot of Royal Rumbles. I didn't recognize Mr. Tranquilo's theme song, so I think it was different. And in this Rumble and the women's, you get so much da 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 that has no personality to it. You do not know how to react to music being played. Now, 364 days of the year, you can get away with it, but not in the Royal Rumble. So you have to forgive me, I'm being a navigator, Nancy, but it's a down. Well, that one is totally pointless, it doesn't matter, but I feel how I feel. The fun continued at number five because Carmelo Hayes continued his run on SmackDown, and honestly, all the props to that guy who went out of his way to make everybody look good. And I suppose he got that back in kind. He eliminated Grayson Waller. Shinsuke Nakamura came at number six, and it was kind of funny because Corey Graves was like, no, no, we don't dance to Shinsuke's theme anymore because he has gone crazy. When who followed him out it was Santos Escobar, the man responsible for everything. We made sure to do the standoff between him and Andrade, which surely will be an amazing for you down the line. When who came in at number eight it was Mr. Black and White Carrion Cross. The ring was totally filling up at this time, and I always enjoy a busy Raw Rumble. I actually think this was quite well planned, because in at number nine was Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> Everybody booed him. It's like when I go to my house at Christmas. Number 10 was Carlito, which made all the sense in the world, because he hates Santos Escobar, although Santos ran away. But this actually was quite nice too, because Carl had his apple, <laughs> he took a bite, and because Escobar wasn't there anymore, what did he do? He turned around, pff, he spat Apple into Dominic's face, which everybody loved, when he grabbed Escobar and eliminated him. And that works too, because it ties into SmackDown. Plant those seeds. Man Meek then arrived at number 11, because it was Bobby Lashley. He gave the worst spear ever to Shinsuke Nakamura. Although he instantly made up for it, because my word, he ran through the condom. It also meant that we did get Lashley versus Carrion. And of course, that continues the feud from the other day too. And what did Bob do? He threw him out. And then all of a sudden, the Street Profits were here, the Authors of Pain were here. And they were writing books on their way to the ring. But as well as this one, all the other ones we've talked about, I think in the early going, we did such a good job and just telling these small tales, which is what any decent Royal Rumble does have, is getting it up. When these teams were brought into the back two, number 12 walked out, and it was Ludwig Kaiser. And this guy's face should win some kind of an award, because he was looking at them like they were his kids brawling. It's hilarious. Number 13 was Austin Theory, and number 14 was Finn Balor, and he instantly teamed up with Dominic Mysterio to get rid of Carmelo Hayes, because don't forget it is the Royal Rumble. And while it is every man for himself, that's only true until you find a friend. Of course, the next one was going to be number 15, meaning we were halfway through the Rumble when we got a big time player. 
because here came Cody Rhodes. Of course, he wants to be Steve Austin this year and go back to back, and he did hurl Austin Theory and his weight belt into the crowd, when at number 16 was Bronson Reed. Good eye. Amazingly, he dumped Andrade, which I suppose could be Andrade's first feud, as Shinsuke and Cody got back into their feud. Well, out came number seven, Kofi Kingston. Cody then used that to cross Rhodes, Shinsuke Nakamura into the ropes and onto the floor. So that was another gnarly elimination. And what did Kofi do as soon as he got in there? He went after Ludwig to see, once again, we continue to tell stories. Kingston was able to eliminate Kaiser too, which worked perfectly for 18, because his dad then arrived. It was Gunther before he got to the ring. He looked at Ludwig like, man, why did I ever bore you? The ring general then did get in there though, and he just chopped everybody, and my word, he came across like a monster. And we had a big stare down between Cody Rhodes and Gunther, and not only does that tie into the Royal Rumble from last year, but I tell you, one day we will do that feud, and it is gonna rock. Gunther also eliminate Kofi Kingston like it was nothing, but I guess they do have their big intercontinental title match on Monday. Well, 19. We got either. 20 then flew around and it felt like we did need something big, so we put Bron Breaker in the Raw Rumble. And honestly, do not come into my house and tell me he's not ready for the main roster. He went in there and he was so fast and he just ruined people. He should be called up tomorrow and made the champ. Now, very interestingly, he also took out Jimmy Uso. I was like, man, I thought that would have been Jay's role. And he also tossed Bella. So we're really giving him the rub, especially because he went toe to toe to Gunther. Give me that at Mania. I mean, Breaker was even throwing him around at one point when number 21 made their way to the ring. I was just there. Yeah, I was so happy because it was the returning Omos. I love Omos. I am an Omos sapien. And of course, I was like, well, here's our winner. Look how big he is. Who's going to throw him out? But they got this cool clock in the corner letting you know how long people have been in the thing. I'm not sure we've done that before, but I really liked it. When Omos grabbed Bronson and he went, see you, mate. Threw him over the top rope. Breaker then made sure to get rid of Ivar, so he got another elimination when we got to 22. And look, I don't want to get into it here. Watch my SmackDown video from yesterday. But I can only presume this was meant to be Brock Lesnar's spot. But instead, just to do something fun, Pat McAfee got out from commentary. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going in. And very sadly for him, the only two people conscious at the time were Gunther and Bron Breaker. So we got in the ring. He surveyed the situation. He went, you know what, I'm good. And he got out the ring and he eliminated himself. So look, it was just a bit of ha-ha. Did it really matter? No, it gave me a chuckle. The only issue is that Bron Breaker then eliminated Omos. I don't think that got the gravitas that it deserved. And nor did the next one, because Dominic got rid of Bron Breaker. Damn. Now, around about this time, JD McDonough was the next entrant into the Rumble. But Bron now hates the Judgment Day, so he speared him, which is when our truth remembered what right Rumble he was meant to bid in. This was even better than before. Because, of course, he never understands what's going on. So given that Dominic Mysterio was in the ring, our truth it could be one of the best moments in Rumble history, thought it was a tag match, and in a Raw Rumble, in front of 50,000 people, or whatever it was, he had the loudest hot tag I've heard in years. I mean, the pop was so loud, I was just laughing. I was on the floor, and then Truth realized instantly, oh no, I made a terrible mistake, because Gunther booted him right in the face. 25 was the Miz, so we got a little moment with awesome Truth, but the whole time, Truth kept trying to save Dominic, because once again, he doesn't know what's going on, and he does, he thinks he's in the Judgment Day, which also tied into number 26, because here came Damien Priest, and I tell you, this small, like three, four minutes, I thought it was really good. And for our Truth alone, Ah, but then your Mr. Money in the Bank was also furious at Truth still, so we just got rid of him instantly. And people like to go, oh, I can't believe the Money in the Bank holders in the Royal Rumble. That's like going, you're a millionaire. Would you like another million pounds? No thanks, I've already got some. We then got to number 27, and this also felt like a moment, because this guy got a mega pop, because that's right. It was CM Punk, who was like back for the first time in a Rumble, after 10 years when he left, following a Rumble. I kind of just watched this, and I'm like, I know he's been back a while, it really is quite surreal. He was also wearing trunks. We could all calm down. There was no long boys. And of course, he eliminated Dominic Mysterio, which also made sense. And out came Ricochet. Now, that should have been a bigger deal. We haven't seen him for a while. But just goes to show we need to do more with Rick. Gunther then chopped the Miz to the floor, which was crazy when we got to number 29. And this too felt like, oh, here we go. Drew McIntyre. And this is when Gunther got rid of Jey Uso. So I have now gone with what my second plan was going to be. But I actually think it will work better. When we get to WrestleMania 40, it should be Jey Uso versus Gunther. And Jey Uso should become the brand new Intercontinental Champion. Give it to me. Could also feel the fans getting excited because, of course, we were about to get number 30. And we'll talk about this later. Because it was good. And it did make me go, wahoo. As it was Sami Zayn. But, of course, so many people thought it was going to be The Rock. 
was not The Rock. Drew was so angry about all of this, he flipped Ricochet out of there, who took a crazy bump, as all these last six guys looked at each other. Which is when Zayn got rid of Damian Priest, but that damn McIntyre got rid of Sami Zayn. So once again, that has to be the Mania match. We've been talking about that for ages. Drew versus Sam. I mean, the final four were indeed Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Gunther, and Drew McIntyre. And at this point, we went to the arena and we saw Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns watching on. McIntyre continued his frustrations because he was just shouting at everybody, oh, this is for me, this is for me. And even told CM Punk, I'm going to bip you. He was totally wrong, though, because Punk got his instant revenge by eliminating the Scottish warrior. So once again, surely that's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to a few down the road. Straight after as well, we went back into the stuff with Gunther and Cody, and I can't wait for them to go at it because they are so good. But the American Nightmare got the surprise on the IC champion here. He knocked him out, which of course meant who were our final two. I mean, you knew this was coming. CM Punk and Cody Thrones. Now, it really did feel massive, and the fans there too totally believe this. And for anybody that was like, oh man, Cody Rhodes is losing steam, you all crazy, man. Because do you know what happened eventually? Look, CM Punk was still getting cheered loads, but he definitely started to get booed because everybody wanted Cody to win. Finish your story. Now, of course, there was a secret third man here as well, which was the WrestleMania sign that CM Punk kept looking at. And at one point, Cody surprised Punk with the crossroads, so Punk surprised him with the go to sleep. CM also followed up with a pedigree. That they said on commentary, if you know, you know, I know, inside baseball. CM Punk then acted like he was going to hit another go to sleep, and he even said to Cody, I didn't wait no 10 years to lose to Dusty's kid. And you can't say things to Cody about his father because he gets all his energy. So as soon as he was up in the air, he bopped CM Punk right in the head and he just threw him. And CM Punk landed on the floor and Cody Rhodes had won two rumbles back to back. I admit it was a little bit anticlimactic, but when you realize that Cody had done it, oh, I tell you once again, warm and fuzzy in your tum tum. Cody also made sure to point at Roman Reigns, unless he misplaced the WrestleMania sign, but there ain't no ha ha he he about who he does want to face. So I actually think we'll get to WrestleMania 40 and Cody will be the guy to beat Roman. Can't get mad at that. I love the fact that he won. I couldn't be a bigger Cody Rhodes fan if I tried. Up. All that said, though, given the sheer excitement beforehand and what I think we could have done in the Men's Rumble, by the end of it, taking the winner to one side, everybody is right. It's just a bit like I kind of expected something different or I expected a different feeling. It never really came. Dare I say it, maybe it was just a little bit by the numbers. I am just still so happy for Cody Rhodes that I can negate this instantly, but when we are talking about pointing our fingers around the place, like at the WrestleMania sign, I do think whatever that was, has to get it down. But that is a super minor one. I do think overall the event was very entertaining. Now it is on to WrestleMania. Hopefully to do what we all want WWE to do. Up. Now please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about the Royal Rumble. Maybe you totally hated it. That's perfectly cool. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. Click the video on the screen which is ups and downs for Smackdown. So you can complete your own ups and downs story. And make sure you have a lovely Sunday. We'll be back on Tuesday for Raw. Just wrestling. Just keeps on going. Very tired. Goodbye.